Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today we are back with the Beginner Series Episode 2. And today I'm going to show you skill bar setup, morphs, how you should level your first character to level 15, and what to do when you get a full inventory as a beginner. I will also talk about different paths of leveling or going about the process if you aren't making your first ever character. And if you are new to this series, basically what I am doing is leveling up a fresh account on the EU server from level 1 to 50 and then CP 160. I'm showing you what I did when I leveled up my main account years ago and what I have learned over the years through a step-by-step -step and level-by-level -level process. If you enjoy these videos in this series and you want them to continue, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to heavy attack that bell icon to stay up to date on all the content in the channel. And if you would like to support the channel even more, you can become a patron. Thank you to all the patrons out there. I do appreciate all of you. You can check that out in the description below. And you can always watch me play live and ask questions on twitch.tv slash probably got this. And you can ask questions in the discord. All the links below are in the description. And lastly, you can check out our new website, probably got this.com where we have tons of beginner content on there. So where we left off with last video is we were getting our crafting certifications. I'll have that linked below in the description. If you missed the first episode of the series, and I just went ahead and did my clothing, blacksmithing, and woodworking one. I didn't do the other three just to kind of wait to do that later. But I just wanted to mention and show you guys that I would recommend doing all six of those so you can get all of them and get the XP with it as well. I'm almost halfway to level eight now. But the first thing that I want to show you before we start questing again is I want to show you morphs and skill bar setup. I kind of briefly went into that before. But right now on my skill bar, I am running... Uh, my uh, skill from my assassin's tree, a skill from my shadow tree, and a skill from my siphoning tree, okay? You can do this on all your characters, doesn't matter what class it is, but this is what I recommend. I recommend putting one of each of these on your line first so you can level them up evenly, okay? Because the more skills you have on this bar from one line, the faster or, or quicker you will level up this line. Now, if you do not have any skills, from a line on your bar when you turn in a quest or get a kill or anything like that you will not get xp towards that line or the skill okay so then the other thing that i did is i put the destruction staff uh skill here on my bar as well but what i'm gonna do is i am gonna show you morphs because right now we have this morph right here assassin's blade what i want you to understand is i don't want you to freak out so much with morphs okay if you choose a morph and you don't like it you can always respec it later on, okay? So it doesn't cost that much. It's not that hard to do this. You just have to spend some gold. Uh, so we'll get into that later when we get to like level 50. But don't stress too much about this, but I just want to give you kind of like a rundown. So Assassin's Blade, just knowing the Mage Blade builds, I know that this is going to be a great skill for us, okay? We are not going to use the Stamina one because we are a Magicka character. So the first rule of thumb is if you're playing a Stamina character, you're typically going to choose the Stamina Morph. Okay, if you're playing a magic character, you're usually going to choose the Magicka Morph, okay? So this one I'm going to choose because this is going to be the Magicka Morph, Impale. Okay, so when I do that, that is going to use a skill point. All right, I also have the ability to get Teleport Strike, which I might get here in a second. And I also have Shadow Cloak, which I will not be getting, and the Offering skill here as well, which I will not be getting. But what I will get is I will get the Strife Morph, which I'm probably going to go with... I'm going to go with Swallow Soul on the Morph. So I'm not really even going to get this morph right now. I don't really want this one personally. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to add Teleport Strike to my bar just so I can leap forward and do some cool things with that. But just keep in mind that when you're morphing again, it's okay if you mess up. You can always respec it later. It's not going to be the end of the world. But again, I want to reiterate your bar setup, okay? Because the more skills you have of a skill line on your bar, the more you're going to get uh, XP for it, basically. So you need to keep that in mind when you're setting this up. This is going to be different for everyone, but this is a general idea of how I would set up the bar if I was, you know, this is my first character, okay? And as this being our main character, we're going to be getting eventually a lot of skill points from doing questing. So what we're going to do now is we are currently halfway to level eight, okay? So we are going to continue questing. And I want to mention that if this is your first character, okay, I would recommend questing and I would recommend this path that we're going to do. What we're going to do is get to level 10 and then we're going to get and do some other things to get us to uh, 15 quicker. Okay. Now, again, if this is not your first character, then a path that I would consider is if you don't want to do questing, okay, is 
going to a guild or going to a friend um and you know so go to your guild list if you're in our guild you can join our guild we have multiple guilds on all platforms you can right click a player and travel to them to them right what you want to look for are players that are in alakir desert and you can also ask a player hey could would i be able to get a teleport to alakir desert what alakir desert has is the Doman farm okay Doman farm it goes in a triangle all right, it's the fastest Dolmen farm in the game. And if you can teleport to all three way shrines for that Dolmen farm, you'll be able to get level 10 very quickly on an alternate character. Okay, so that's something that you could do to get to level 10 alternatively, or you could do, um, you know, someone could carry you through Skyreach, but you don't need to worry about that as this for people that are doing this for the first time. So for us, we are just gonna start questing and we're gonna do overland content, okay? I've already upgraded my mount speed as well. I'm actually making my way to this city up here, but I'm gonna do the quests as I go up here and I'm gonna collect books. I'm gonna do a world boss and everything like that. And I wanna mention again, y'all, that if you wanna do questing in another zone other than Ardon, you can. This is just the zone that I picked, okay? So you do not have to quest here. You could quest in Blackwood if you want. You can quest in, uh, you know, Greymoor, Somerset, but this is the zone that I have picked to quest in. Gonna get this Sky Shard on top of this building. Make sure again that you're getting your sky shards as you go it will save you in the long run so as you see we have completed this quest in this town so it turned this icon white which means you have completed um that means you've completed that area's quest hub which is really really nice because again it will give you a nice chunk of xp and we got some armor and we got some weapons so let's take a look at our inventory real quick uh we did get some new stuff we got the taylor's crafting box that was just from leveling up we want to make sure that we always Get those things we got some crown uh, we got an xp scroll and everything uh we got heavy legs i'm looking for a light armor currently so right now we got heavy we got a um light piece of head but that's ornate uh heavy we got medium medium and heavy so what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna put on um heavy armor because in order to unlock the um in order to unlock the lines uh, for your armor, you need to equip at least three pieces of that armor, okay? Now, that's something that you're going to want to do so you can get those undaunted passives. Uh, these right here are very, very important, okay? So, um, basically, unlocking the heavy armor, medium armor, and light armor lines are important because you want to eventually have those maxed out so you can get extra passive buffs on your characters. Now, for this character, we're going to use main mainly light armor, so once we have those unlocked, we can just run five pieces of light armor, one piece of medium armor, and one piece of heavy armor. For stamina, you could run five pieces of medium or seven pieces of medium. But as you're leveling, you could do five medium, one light, one heavy. Same with the tank, you could do five heavy, one light, one medium. But you need to unlock the lines first. So make sure that you do that. So again, what we're gonna do is we're going to put three pieces of heavy armor on. Yeah, and so currently we only have two medium and two heavy right now. So we'll just wait to get more. I'm gonna go over to this lore book over here and get this for the Mage's Guild. And then we're gonna go over to this world boss and see if anyone's over here to help. Someone is doing this world boss. So we're gonna get this completion. Okay, go and get the light armor. Okay, so we just got the light armor line. So we just gotta keep an eye out for medium and heavy then. All right, we're gonna go get this way shrine. So what we're gonna do now is go to this town. Do the quest here. And while we're over here doing this quest, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, we're going to hit this delve as well, because this is what I usually like to do. I like to clear things as I go through it. So if I get close to something, I'm going to usually try to clear it. That's what I did when I played this game at first. And it just helps you kind of consolidate everything. So I'm actually going to go take on this delve here in a second. What I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and get, um, force shock because it's something that's really good. I'm going to actually put in Run this teleport strike just a great spammable for magicka dps in the early game and the late game and all the game these bookshelves because every time you read a bookshelf you have a you have an opportunity see right there heavy armor increased to level five you have a opportunity to level up a skill uh line randomly so right there i just read all those bookcases and i got two skill levels it's, it's a fantastic thing to do, so make sure you do that, okay? We just leveled up, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get a Prophet Inferno Staff. We'll put points into Magicka. And we just got Medium Boots. 
what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, go back to this village right here. And we're going to, um, we have three skill points. So we're gonna morph our wall of elements into um, unstable wall of elements. And then we see that we have the light and the heavy lines. Uh, for the classes, we're gonna now get our ultimate, okay? The ultimate that I wanna use is uh, Deathstroke is nice. I, I really like uh, Soul Shred, so I'm actually going to get Soul Shred, and I'm going to put that on my bar here. I love it. Now we are on our way to level 10. We're on level 9 right now, so once we hit level 10, we are going to do something else. I'm in here. I'm just looting everything as well. If you're stealing something, you just got to be careful, but you can get some recipes and stuff. You're going to need recipes, so make sure to use those. Okay, we got a lead as well. Nice. Okay, we completed that quest and we are almost level 10. So we are now gonna go down here in the map and get the rest of these locations uh, so we can start clearing. But see, as you see, we've made our way up through here uh, and we've cleared two quests here. We got the world boss there. We're gonna go down to this way shrine um, and get this uh, main quest right there. So as you see, we have reached level 10. It says Cyrodiil has, uh, or Cyrodiil awaits. And that's important because what we're gonna do right now is we're actually going to go to Cyrodiil to do the intro quest. It's gonna be very, very quick, uh, but it'll get us a little bit of XP and it'll get us to Cyrodiil. So after we finish this little part in this quest, we will do that. The next thing that we also unlocked is we unlocked the dungeon finder, which we are going to use as well. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the Cyrodiil screen, which is the Alliance War, which is L, okay? So what you're gonna do is uh, you can go to standard no CP or just go to below 50. It's pretty easy, it doesn't really matter, but all you do is double click on the, the campaign and it will queue you in and we are going to Cyrodiil. So once you go to Cyrodiil, you're gonna go to welcome to Cyrodiil quest right here and we're going to complete this quest. We're gonna have us use the Transitus Way Shrine. We're gonna go to the Morrowind, North, Northern Morrowind Gate, which I believe is up here, yep. Gosh, okay, when we get here, we get here we need to go to the siege range below. So we do that, we'll get a, a quest finisher right there. We'll get some AP points as well. And we're going to learn how to use the, um, the siege weapons. We're also gonna get two skill points as well from doing this. So we need to repair the siege kit. We're gonna put it in the quick slot item right there. And we have completed um, that right there. So from just doing that, we got two skill points and we unlock the assault and support lines, which gives us level two already, okay? The great thing about this is we are gonna get close to continuous attack, which we need to get our uh, mount speed up to 30%. We just need rank three in the assault tree to get this. This is going to help you out so much as a beginner when you are mounting around. That's gonna be such an amazing boost since mount speed takes a little bit of time to get up. But the assault and support lines are important to PVE. There are some great skills on there that you can use. And again, I want to mention that if you don't want to go this path the way that I'm doing this to level uh, 10 and level 15, there are other paths, like I said, doing dolmens, doing carries and stuff. But as your first character, this is going to be so crucial because you're learning the game. You're learning your character, your role, and you're getting skill points, y'all. Skill points are so important and it's gonna be huge for you um, when you get later in the game, I'm telling you. Basically what these quests are doing too is it just teaches you about the daily quests and what Cyrodiil is about. And after you do that, you can actually do the daily quests here. But we have completed that now, and so now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, leave Cyrodiil, but look, we have actually gotten level three assault and level three support just by doing the intro quest to Cyrodiil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this continuous attack support skill and that is going to give us 30 percent mount speed which is insane you all it's going to be absolutely fantastic so to leave Cyrodiil all you need to do is make sure you go to this way shrine here if you're automated dominion you're going to be down here if you're direfall covenant you're going to be up there so now once you do that we'll way shrine back so as you can see our mount speed is so much faster just from that bonus so that's why doing that Cyrodiil daily is really nice so what we're going to do now is I'm, before we queue up for a random dungeon, because that is what we're gonna do next uh, after I show you this next thing, um, we are gonna go through what to do when your inventory is full, okay? Because as a beginner, as you quest through, as you do dungeons, delves, kill enemies, all that stuff, you're going to acquire a lot of gear, you're going to acquire 
gold, you're going to acquire, you know, a clogged up inventory and you're going to be like, okay, what should I do with all the items? What should I do with, um, you know, uh, the gold that I get all that stuff. Right. So I'm going to go through that with you right now. Cause this is one of the biggest things that I think that is, um, a crucial thing for this game. And so let's just go through kind of what you should be doing. So for crafting and everything, there are, you know, the woodworking lines, there are blacksmithing, clothing, jewelry making, um, provisioning, alchemy, and provisioning, okay? So the gear and stuff you get are gonna be through woodworking, blacksmithing, and clothing, okay? So for woodworking, you're gonna deconstruct and make staves, bows, and shields here, okay? For blacksmithing, you're gonna make, um, you're gonna make like melee weapons and heavy armor and for clothing you're going to make and deconstruct light and medium armor okay so you'll see here if we go to the deconstruct tab uh the first thing that i want you to see is this intricate symbol okay intricate means that if you deconstruct this you're going to get 285 percent uh, increased inspiration um, and additional refined materials upon this you want to always deconstruct these items okay so we're going to deconstruct that all right now You'll see next to this ornate. This means that you can increase this items. Uh, this increases the item sell price by two hundred eighty percent. So you want to sell these items always to a merchant, okay? And then you'll see the magnifying glass. This means you can research. This is something you need to do on at, at, at first when you get a new character, a new account. You need to always research, okay? The research tab is very very important. And so we have, as you can see here. Uh, multiple things we can research, but we can only research one thing at a time, but this takes real life time. Okay. You see five hours. Now we can get passives that decreases and allow us to research more than one item. Now, um, as you can see, it did consume that item. Don't worry about that because again, you're not going to need these items right now. And it's going to go into your item set collection book. But the thing that I want to show you is I want you to first, before you do any of that, if you're coming in from questing and you got a full inventory, I want you to go over to a bank, okay? Um, I don't think I have a banker on this account. No, it does not look like it. Okay, but you need to go over to a bank. A bank looks like this. They're in basically every city. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bank a lot of these items because you can research deconstruct item and deconstruct items from your bank. You do not have to have them in your inventory. The reason I want to um, bank these is because we're gonna need to keep some researchable items, okay? So we're going to go over to the bank here. We're going to talk to this person. We're going to go here. Okay. So we have 120 bank slots. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, deposit this charge uh, staff, this uh, medium shoulder. Let's see. Hold on. Let me make sure I got some things here. So we got um, heavy legs. We'll keep that. Medium boots, we'll keep that, um, and we'll deposit that. We'll deposit this. Um, we'll honestly just deposit everything right now just because uh, we have the space. Um, we'll keep the ornate stuff in, the, uh, in our stuff. Okay. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here, and now let's go back to the crafting tables. Okay, so we're going to go to the blacksmithing table right now. Uh, we're going to go deconstruct. So we have this intricate one and we have some items here that we can research. So we're just going to deconstruct that. Um, deconstruct. And we're going to research. Uh, we're going to do this sword. Okay. We're going to research that. And that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, clothing station. We're going to go to deconstruct. We're going to deconstruct this, this, this. Um, and then it looks like we have two things we can research. So we have the uh, boots here that we can research as well. So we're going to go over here, research them. And we're going to talk to this merchant right here. And we're going to sell everything that we have that's ornate and all this treasure. So we're going to sell that. We're going to sell that. We're going to sell these costumes as well. We're going to sell the glyph. We're going to go back up to the woodworking station. Okay. So as you can see, we got rid of a lot of the stuff in our inventory. We only have 22 things in our inventory now. And we have 1.3K gold, okay? So what you can start spending your gold on uh, when you start accumulating this is you can start using it for mount upgrades, like I said, and you can get bag upgrades and uh, bank upgrades for space. 
Now, those are going to be a little costly and everything, but it is a good thing to spend your money on. You can do the bank upgrades here at the bank. And the pack merchant you can find uh, at Somerset. There's multiple pack merchants, but there's a pack merchant here in Somerset right here in uh, Alinor. But um, they are basically in every city as well. Um, but that is kind of what you can do with your gold and your items. Now, I would hold on to some of those researchable items so you can research them later. Um, if you have excess skill points, you can start spending them in certain crafting trees here. But that is something I want to cover later on in a um, episode of Beginner Series. But right now, we are going to uh, launch a random dungeon so we can get a couple more levels, and I will go through that. Okay, so if you can't find a group like through a guild for a random dungeon, if you're queuing or anything like that, uh, what you can do is... I know of a place in Grotwood, <clears throat> which is in the Aldermary Dominion. They can get a cart to, it, it's right here. You can get a cart to Craglorn, which is where people ask to do, uh, you know, random stuff like in group a lot of times. Uh, it will take you to Belkarth. So with that, you can actually travel there. There's other places, I think, as well. I think it's in your capital city of your alliance. So for like Ebonart Pact, it would be um, in uh, Deshaun uh, over here in uh mournhold i believe um and then uh direfall covenant <clears throat> would be i think in stormhaven in a uh, way rest but i'm just gonna go here because i know it's here and where you can go is in aradon right here you can go to this boat person and you can travel within um the aldermary dominion right here so you just say this and then go to grotwood and she takes you to grotwood so as you can see we're right here and then you can use the cart to belkarth this is the cart to belkarth right here Okay, so now we're in Belkarth. We're just going to type and see if we can get a dungeon group. All right, so we're going to queue for a random dungeon. So we can get this bonus XP. We're going to get Spindle Clutch 1. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop our XP scroll that we got from leveling uh, through the level tip uh, like thing that you see on the left side of the screen every time you level. Because this is going to increase our XP from this dungeon. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that XP scroll right now. This is for two hours, so this is going to increase this. I'm going to get the quest, and we're going to do the dungeon. And when you're dunge uh, queuing for dungeons, um, it is hard to go as a solo DPS queue. It takes a while just because there's so many DPS in this game. Some people will queue as a tank in a low um, low dungeon situation, and that will get instant queues. Um, in my opinion, I would just try to not fake tank as best you can, uh, just because that way it doesn't... Um, you know, it, it allows tanks that actually want to queue to, to queue. I mean, especially when you get higher up into the dungeons, you'll, you'll start needing some tanks and stuff. So I would just try to, uh, I would try your best to find a group if you can, uh, and get the dungeon done that way. But again, the reason this is just so crucial is because this is going to give us a good bit of levels just from this dungeon. So you will see after when we finish this, how good this is going to be. And as a beginner, again, it's not as important about leveling up as quick as possible. It's just the fact that we, if we can get about three or four levels from this dungeon, we can then almost get our second bar, which is at level 15. And the nice thing too, is you always want to pick up the quest in a dungeon that you haven't done because you will get a skill point for every single quest in each dungeon once for each character. So it's, it's really, really solid. As you can tell, we're actually out of buff food. I don't have any other buff food right now, so I'm just not worrying about it. Our stats are already pretty solid just from that. Here somewhere, we want to make sure we get this. Got to get that Mage's Guild up. I'm telling you, just do it passively. You'll, you'll thank me later. Even if your character is a stamina character, get the Mage's Guild up. You may switch your character at some point. We also morphed our Force Shock. All right, and there we go. We have completed the dungeon, and we are now level 13 just from completing the random dungeon for the day. And we're going to turn the quest, and we're going to go even higher. See there? We got the skill point and another uh, gear piece. So after you run that random dungeon, you're halfway to level 15. What you can do next to get past level 15 is you can continue questing. You can go do dolmens, uh, or you can run your... Uh, random battleground which i would suggest because you have that xp scroll active okay this is going to get you probably to um because if you do 50 percent 16 that's 24k xp so that is probably going to get you to 16 close to 16 if not 
and that's going to give you battleground supplies it's also going to level up your pvp lines which is something that you definitely need to do at some point so that's what you can do next for that but let's recap this episode then because we got a lot done in this episode in a pretty s small amount of time and so the things that we want to recap is we talked about our skill bar and we talked about how uh the amount of skills that you put in your bar uh can dictate how fast you level up a line so if you go all five skills assassination uh you'll level up your assassination bar very very quickly um and another thing with that is we talked about morphs so morphs have different costs like magicka stamina health and there are specific morphs that are good for your build but if you uh, do a morph that you don't like, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. You can always respec it later. It doesn't cost that much gold. We also talked about questing to level 10 and the path to level 10. You can quest, you can do dolmens and alakir if this isn't your first character. But if this is your first character, I would highly suggest doing quests. Because in this episode, we, we cleared this world boss, we cleared this quest, we did this quest, we did that delve, we got those way shrines, and we're working on the main quest. So we got a lot done just in that aspect. We also, once we hit level 10, we were able to do the Cyrodiil base quest line, which was very, very nice because what that did, that was about a 15 minute quest line and that got our Alliance War uh, skills, Assault and Support, all the way up to level three, which already lets you use Vigor and uh, Seed Shield. But most importantly, we got our passive for continuous attack, which gives us 30% mount speed which makes us not slow as molasses now. And the other thing we talked about is inventory management, okay? Inventory management is very crucial in this game. And as you see right now, we're sitting at 2.1K gold already at level 14, which is solid. And we have more things to sell here. We have more sets that we could use or deconstruct. Uh, this is something that we talked about how you want to research items and then put certain items in your bank because especially researchable items because if you put because you can research and deconstruct items from your bank you do not need to have them necessarily in your inventory so what i'm going to do before we get off this episode is i'm going to go and i'm actually going to clear my inventory and research the items that i need another thing that we covered is armor lines in order to unlock an armor line light medium or heavy you need to equip at least three pieces of that armor line if you are a um Magicka DPS, you would want to ideally, as you level, run five pieces of light, one medium, and one heavy, so you level each of the lines. If you're uh, stamina, you can do five medium, one light, one heavy, and then if you're tank, you can do five heavy, one light, one medium. We're going to deconstruct the things that we need to deconstruct. Talk to the NPC. We're going to sell. Okay, so we have done that now, and we cleared our inventory here a little bit. Um, and so... That is going to wrap up this uh, episode for the beginner series. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and heavy attack that bell icon. To stay up to date on all the content in the channel. On the next episode, we're going to cover a good bit of things. We're going to be doing questing. We're going to be talking about skill points. We're going to be talking about uh, crafting lines as well. And just continually progressing through the game on how I would on a fresh account. And again, you can always ask me questions on twitch.tv slash probably got this or in the comment section. I stream on Twitch though. And you can also ask questions in our Discord. All the links are below and you can check out all types of beginner content on the website at probably But until next time, y'all, just remember to have faith, be great, and I'll see you on ESO.